I'm reading the Harry Potter books and I do not remember the name of the third book. The third book in the Harry Potter series is titled Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Enjoy awesome. your reading. Uh, what is the number of books in the series? The Harry Potter series consists of seven books. They are cool. one, Harry. And what was the year that the first book was released? The first book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, titled Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in the U.S., was released in the United Kingdom on June 26. Cool. So let me show you how quickly and how easy it is to build a voice assistant like this one right here. Only seven lines of code. I'm using LifeKit. I'm using Assembly AI. There is speech to text detection model, which is amazing service. And I'm using OpenAI for the assistant itself. Uh, it is very simple to code these. I'm going to leave a link to the GitHub uh, repository so you can just clone the project and use it. And in order to set it up, uh, the only thing that you need is to grab this specific API key. So you need to go to LifeKit, grab their API key and secret, OpenAI and Assembly AI. And after you set up the environment variables, you can just use these commands to run the application. Very, very simple. Here is all of the code. I'm going to go through it so you understand the components that make for this voice assistant application. And I'm going to start by loading the environment variables. And from there, I'm going to define the class that defines the assistant. And this class, it can get way more complex than this. But for this specific example, it's just this function with a prompt that says you are a helpful voice AI assistant. That's it. That's all we need to get started. Now, this function, the entry point, is the one that's being called from uh, when we run the script. The entry point function is the one that's going to start running. I'm using here, remember, LifeKit. So all of this code is for LifeKit to run this console application. So let's look at the entry point because here we are going to define every single component that we need, starting with the text to speech component. In this application, I'm using OpenAI text to speech. There are other services that you could be using as well. Uh, the voice is alloy. Remember, text to speech is going to take it's going to take text and turn that text into the voice that you hear. So this is how I use the OpenAI text-to-speech detector. For the speech-to-text service, so the one that takes voice, our voice when I speak, and turns that into text, I'm using Assembly AI's latest model. This is amazing, especially because they have now incorporated turn detection. I'm going to explain that in a second. But I'm using assembly AI here, and this is the configuration for the turns. Explain that in just one second. Now, I'm using the voice activity detector from Cileros. I think that's the way you pronounce it. Basically, the VAD, this is going to detect human speech within an audio segment, right? So whenever we get audio, in order for us to determine whether a human is speaking, this is what we're using. Then the LLM that is going to be powering this voice agent. And in this case, just to keep it simple, this is GPT-40 Mini. And finally, the turn detection that we're going to be using. Now, there are services that offer turn detection. But in this particular case, notice that I'm using the STT, the speech to text service. And that is Assembly's AI. So turn detection is the way that these models have uh, to determine when somebody stopped speaking. So imagine that I say, uh, what day is today? That silence right there should be interpreted as stop. So the next person has an opportunity to talk. But it gets a little bit more complex than just looking for pauses. For example, if you ask me about my ID number or my credit card number, I might answer by saying my credit card number is and then pause while I look for that number on my phone. So this service should be good enough to understand that that 
specific pause does not mean that I stopped speaking, but it has to give me some time so I can find that number and say it back. Assembly's AI turn detection is out of this world is very, very good. Okay, so after I define all of the different components, I can just put them together in an agent session. This is a class for LifeKit. So notice how I specify each one of those services. And after that, I can just start my session. There are a bunch of parameters here. The first one is the room where this conversation will be taking place. That is a concept specific to LifeKit. And I'm using the default room that's assigned to me through the context. Then I define who the agent is going to be or what class is representing my agent, which is the simple class that I defined before. And then uh, in this particular case, because I'm using LifeKit Cloud, they support noise canceling, which is great because the conversation is going to be much better. So after that, that's pretty much it. I can just run the application. If you go to the readme file, the first time you run the application, download all of the files that you need locally. And after that, you can just run it with console and start speaking to your agent. Try to interrupt your agent. Try to just have a natural conversation, even with pauses, and you'll see how good this is. So very, very simple to install. It does not cost you anything to run this on your computer because all of the services have huge limits. So anyway, hope you find this helpful. I'm going to leave the GitHub URL somewhere so you can access it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.